guys. Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is amazing and happy December. Um, Christmas is creeping up on us. I hope you guys are all amazing and now it kind of looks like winter finally outside with some snow. Um, so this week I will do my normal. So if you guys want to ask questions, you can ask questions. Um, I will also answer questions that have already been asked uh, throughout the week. And I will do some uh, happy news as well as real estate updates and statistics. Hi, Scotty. I'm sorry I'm late. I um, hope your showing thing went well today. Um, hi, Josh. Um, thank you. Happy Wednesday. Um, Josh, I don't know if your sister um, knew, but hopefully she's not disappointed. So um, we still have the December draw too, but I will say more about that later. Um, but our first question comes from, um, again, you can ask questions throughout this live. And if nobody asks questions, I'll just answer the ones that have already previously been asked in the last week. Um, and if I get too many, I will just uh, message people privately or give them a call, okay? Um, so Kelly from Stainer um, was our first question this week. And um, Kelly said, what does that say? That's not right. Wah, wah. It's, oh, there it is. Meh. Um, Kelly from Stainer, our mortgage renews in July uh, of next year. When should we ideally put our house up for sale? Um, so the average closing, um, Kelly, is 60 to 90 days. So thank you for asking. So obviously that would take you about till April. Um, but if your mortgage renews, when did you say July? Then your penalty is probably not very big to get out of it. So if you wanted to move sooner, you could. Um, so obviously the market is hot right now and there's not a lot um, of inventory. So if you want to take advantage of that, you could find out what your penalty is, or maybe you don't even have a penalty and you can port your mortgage, which means you can move it to the next house. So then it would just be at the next house that it renews July of next year. Um, but just check with your mortgage uh, broker or agent first and say, you know, is my mortgage portable? And if not, um, what is my penalty to get out of it before um, July? Okay. Thank you for asking. Hi, Josh. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So the next one um, is... Again, I just do random happy news before I do the real estate statistics. So there was a man that was basically in a prison camp back in like World War II. And um, he got out of the prison camp and they was in uh, Yugoslavia and he became like some tool maker, um, whatever that really means, and a developer. And fast forward now, he's um, 85, his wife is 82, and they've been together for 50 years, um, which is not the point, but it's just cute. Um, but basically they are um, building a children's hospital hospital, and um, developing it and everything and they're putting 50 million of their own money in and uh, he said there's a saying that says, you know, put your money where your mouth is. So um, they're putting 50 million into that, which is amazing. Um, okay, what is the next question? Um, Brent and Stephanie um, from Innisfil. So Brent and Stephanie said, um, we're very fortunate. Um, hi, Taylor. We're very, oh, it's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. It says Taylor, but hi, Lisa. Or Taylor, maybe. Um, we're, where did I go here? We're very fortunate and have 100K that was given to us recently. Should we renovate our current home or buy an investment property? Um, thank you, Brent and Stephanie, for asking. Um, so, I mean, obviously you could do multiple things, but what I would probably do is depending on what your current need, uh, your current house needs. Hi, Justin. Um, what your current house needs is maybe do some renovations to yours, like the main things people look at, kitchens, bathrooms, floors, and then you could refinance yours. So you use your renovation money to do your house. You refinance yours. So then you have money again, and then you buy an investment property. So you don't have to choose, do we renovate ours or buy an investment property? You can do both. Um, so that is what I would do. Hello, Justin. It's funny because it like shows me your bubble here first and then it shows me over there second. Um, okay, so I have to remind you guys about the Christmas giveaway. So yesterday was December 1st and we did the $1,000 a month giveaway, which went to a lady named Tina, um, who was amazing. I love the mornings when we do that giveaway. She luckily answered the door for me because after a while of knocking and the doorbell, I didn't know if she was coming. Um, but she did come to the door. But for uh, December, so January 1st, we're not going to do it. We'll let you guys sleep in after New Year's. But instead, on December 20th, which is the Sunday before um, Christmas, we're going to go around and knock on people's doors and give them Christmas dinner as well as gifts. 
So you can nominate anybody you want as long as they live in Simcoe County um, and just send us a video and say who you are and who you would like to win and why. And we'll never disclose that personal information because we've had some people say, well, I don't want them to know, people to know that they're in a rough spot or I don't want them to know that they're whoever just passed away or whatever. It doesn't have to be something tragic. It could just be for being an amazing person or it could be something tragic. Whatever you want to um, nominate somebody for. It could be an individual person or family or what have you, okay? Um, okay. So, um, there was a bride, and I'm just saying, like, ask and thou shall receive, you know, the thing. Um, so there was a bride, where was she? In Missouri, I think. Um, and she basically is saving to buy a house, and um, her wedding, obviously, in her wedding dress. And she found a wedding dress, and it was $1,300, and it was out of her budget. So instead of, like, crying about it, she could have gone and, you know, worked some extra jobs or something, but she is already working extra jobs. Um, so she took a picture and she posted it on Twitter and like wrote this um, blurb and um, a famous rapper actually paid for it for her, um, which was Missy Elliott. So I don't know if they have to play all Missy Elliott songs at their wedding in March, but that was cute. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Ryan. Um, oh, thank you, Shaquille. Shaquille said about the thousand dollar giveaways. Hi, Douglas. Um... Uh, thank you for putting your picture up, Douglas. We have a, a giveaway every week, and Douglas posted a picture. So what it is this week is just post something that you're grateful for. So he posted a picture of his friends. Um, so that, you can post that. We have lots of giveaways, really. Um, Tis the season to give. Hi, Keelan. Um, What is my next question here? Um, Maya and Greg in Barry. So Maya and Greg, um, we have a home in the East End and love it here, but we're afraid if we sell, we won't be able to get back into this neighborhood. Should we just keep it and renovate it? Um, thank you, Maya and Greg, for um, asking. I'm assuming, obviously, it's too small of a footprint, but I don't know if you sell it, why you wouldn't be able to get back into the market because obviously you could sell for high because the market is crazy. Yes, then you're competing, but depending when you bought, maybe you have... 100,000 equity, maybe a 400,000 equity. I have no idea. So I don't really know the actual reasoning why you think you might not get into the market um, unless you just don't like being in um, bidding war situations. But there still are some that come up and it's like coming soon um, to realtor.ca that you could sneak in on um, or there's some power of sales and foreclosures and stuff. Um, so if you like really love the property, it's walking distance to the school and whatever and you want to live through the renovation, all the power to you. Um, but there are back doors around it and it kind of, like I said, depends why you think you're not going to get back into the market. So I kind of can't fully answer that question. I apologize. Um, hi, Amanda. Thanks, Gilin. It's kind of Christmassy sweater. Um, okay. So uh, one more thing before real estate is about a free moving service, which I thought was really cute. Um, so like for our clients, we have free trailers and boxes and tape and stuff. But there's a new moving service, not super new, but um, recently, and it's called Hunks. Um, and it's not like some Fabio men with like 12 pack abs. Um, but it stands for honest, uniform, nice, knowledgeable service. And what it does is they move people for free if they're in homes, um, that are experiencing domestic violence. So they have to go through this program to make sure it's actually, um, you know, the cause or not the cause, but like that's the situation. They're not just trying to get free moving, but they, if they do qualify, they get free movers as well as a moving truck and they can go anywhere in Canada or the United States which I thought was really cool. And it was started by two guys, um, roommates in university, um, who, you know, without disclosing stuff, obviously knew some things about domestic violence in their upbringing. So super cool of them. Okay. So I'm pretty sure now it was real estate. Let me check. Yes. Now it's real estate. Hi, Art. Hi, Tab. How are you? So many new mums. Um, and now your best friend, Tab, her, um, little guy was just born. Um, okay. So real estate. Um, last week I talked a bit about fixed rates and variable rates. So, um, currently today the fixed rate for five year is 1.39 and that's if you're a new, um, buyer and it's 1.84 if you're refinancing your current property. And if you want to do a variable, um, it's 1.5 for a five year, um, variable and 1.75 for a refinance. That's my awful hair. Um, but 
like what are other things people should look at? Um, a lot of people just look at the rate, but they don't look at monthly. So um, there's a mortgage broker that's super popular um, in Ontario and basically said if one is like $1,800 a month and one is $2,000 a month, you should pick the $1,800 a month, but still put down $2,000, uh, not put down, but pay $2,000 every month because then that $200 is going directly to your um, principal as opposed to just paying you know the interest and a little bit of principal, okay? Um, it was also said that if you pick a variable, if you're comfortable with it, you do variable and wait and see. And if you can get one that it's um, called convertible mortgage, which means it can start as a variable, but then if you decide um, to lock it in, you can lock it in. So, you know, it kind of give you, gives you the best of both worlds. Um, but basically the reason that guy said is just because the market um, in the world is kind of so up and down right now, that's why he would do the variable. So that was his um, take on it. Um, and then even obviously with like the virus right now and the world and so forth, um, everything is still on the rise, like real estate still on the rise. 51% um, of people said they're actually considering making a move in the next six months, which is crazy to me that half of people are thinking about that supposedly from the study um, that was just done of 20,000 Ontarians. Um, and they haven't passed the bill yet, but they are still fighting to get land transfer tax um, put on kind of like a nap mode. Um, so people don't have to pay land transfer tax for a bit, but it has not been officially, um, it hasn't happened yet. Um, besides things being on the rise, the rental market is still not the greatest in Toronto, but hopefully that is not uh, where your investments lie um, because the rest is booming. Um, and on a just a side note, the, the place that made the most, like the highest rise in real estate in the past three months was Windsor. Um, I've never been there, but I have friends that uh, have properties there or from there. So Windsor is doing the best in all of Ontario in the past three months. Um, and then the main thing, not the main things, but another trend we've seen in selling is condos. Um, Meanwhile, you know, I just moved to one, but some people feel like they're cooped up in a condo. So they want to have a bigger yard. They want to have bigger square footage. Um, they want to have a home office and so forth. So that is another trend of lots of condos coming up for sale. And um, majority of families said the reason they move out of a condo is for the yard and the square footage. Um, the current uh, bank rate right, right now is 0.25, which is the, hot, the highest, the lowest uh, it has ever been ever. Not like in the last 10 years, not in the last 20 years, ever. It's the lowest it has ever been. Um, so people before that weren't approved for much, maybe they were approved for 300 and now are approved for 410 or 470 or 490 or what have you is a reason, many reasons that's fueling um, people buying right now. The people coming from Toronto, sometimes they're buying, um, uh, what's it called? Cottages. Um, other times they want to live there full time, um, but it's just lack of inventory and then people seeing, okay, now I can afford so much more even though my payment is the exact same a month. So they're getting into it and taking advantage of the cheap um, rates but there's lots of reasons, but I go over them every week, so I don't need to go over them all. Um, so cottage country right now is up in, so what that means is basically any waterfront um, property um, is 11% higher right now in Ontario than it was last year, um, just as you know, all the city folk come up and so forth. And um, if we just look at October, over last October, it's up 15.2%, um, and it's the lowest amount of inventory there's ever been of waterfront homes um, in the last 15 years, which is crazy. Um, hi, Christina. How are you? Hi, Art. Um, so that is the cottage world. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So besides like people from Toronto um, wanting a cottage or what have you, um, a lot of people that are also competing against them is retirees because they're maybe for their safety, their health or whatever. They're trying to get out of the city. So you have the retirees, you know, with the people from Toronto trying to get out um, that maybe are younger, still working, working from home. Um, so they're competing. And then um, if we look, I had a thing, I had a statistic somewhere about Muskoka um, and they were up over 20% um, over last year, the average sales price. And then um, tons of people are doing no conditions. So multiple offers, um, the last four that we've done at our brokerage have had multiple offers. I think four was the least amount and nine was the most. Um, so the last one we did was a cottage up north. It was listed for 329. Um, they bought it for $2.99 last year. It's like two hours and 10 minutes away from here. Um, and it sold for $5.30 and they just bought last year, which is insane. Um, but if you think about somebody in Toronto and what they can buy, you know, a townhouse for, that to them, you know, they're just like, okay, we have this beautiful cottage on the lake. And so it's kind of a no-brainer to them. Um, 
And 52% uh, of Canadians said that uh, they feel that investing in real estate is going to be the safest in 2021. Like whether it's stocks or whatever, they feel like that real estate is the safest. Um, and the supply is expected to stay low in 2021, um, which is obviously going to continue the prices up and bidding wars. Um, of people that sold in uh, the pandemic, 6%, only 6% said said they sold because of financial reasons like that they had to, that they couldn't afford it. 40% of people realized that they, their house needed renovating and they did not want to do it. And 29% said they moved for more space, um, whether inside or outside. And then the rest was like miscellaneous, 2% of this, 7%, et cetera. Um, so that was that. Hi, Anthony. Um, what else did I have? Um, so some people like say they want to invest in real estate, but they don't have the funds. Um, so there's a new program uh, that came out uh, in spring of this year. And basically it wants to help, um, you know, the younger generation or people that can't invest and don't have like super deep pockets themselves. And I know it sounds weird. You can start with a dollar, but basically they let you invest anywhere from a dollar to $1,500 and they divide a property. So say they buy a 20 plex and they divide it into all the people and then they run it, they get the tenants and so forth and then they split the profit depending on how much money you put in. Um, but basically they wanna show people, okay, we can turn your 1500 into 3000, then you can turn it to 6000, um, 12000, et cetera. And they just wanna show people as opposed to them waiting and saying, oh, I'll never get 150,000 to um, you know, invest myself. And they currently have multiplex properties in Toronto um, and Vancouver. So that is something that I just thought was cool. Um, another thing that uh, people ask a lot is like, why are millennials moving? Um, so 44% said they moved for more square footage and they're allowed to pick multiple answers in this, by the way. 57% um, said they want a yard. So they moved from uh, an apartment or a condo. 34% um, said they wanted to be closer to green space. Um, I'm gonna say to get a puppy, but I don't know why they wanted to move closer to green space and 28% wanted a home office. Um, they said 8% of millennials are planning on moving in 2021. And um, the amount, although the amount of homes sold in October is down, which I will tell you guys more in detail next week, um, the average sales price in all of Ontario is up over 15%, which is good. Um, hi, Courtney. Um, Barry, in the last seven days, there's been 29 new listings, um, 15 conditionally sold already. Um, 52 went firm, and if you say how did only 29 get listed and 52 went firm, it's because there was older ones, obviously, like older listings, they didn't all have to be new. Um, 115 people got keys in the last seven days to their property, and um, one price increased. Um, and somebody might say like, how does your price increase? Um, and you actually can do that. Like some people say, oh, you can only go down, you can't go up, which is actually not true. You could list for $4.99 and hold offers and get say $5.30 and cancel and relist for $5.99 if you want, you can do that. Um, condos in the last seven days, there has only been eight new listings in Barrie, six of them conditionally sold, um, and 28 people got keys. And in Essa, there was only one new listing, which is crazy low, showing lack of inventory. Four went conditional, again, some were from the past. Uh, 10 sold firm, again, some were two, three, four, five week old listings, and 22 people got keys. Um, Courtney, I hope you're coming to the photo thing we're doing. Um, I'm going to skip Oro and Springwater, maybe, or no, yeah, I'm gonna skip it. I'll tell it a little bit, I'll tell it fast. Or, uh, Oro also only had one new listing, just like Essa. Four conditionally sold, 10 went firm, and 19 people got keys. And Springwater had eight new listings, six conditionally sold, six people got keys, and 20, or sorry, six people sold firm, and 23 people got keys, okay? Okay. Um, yay. Sorry, I read stuff. I'm looking at the reading. I'm reading. I'll just randomly say yay. <laughs> um, okay, so this question comes from Jackson in Wasega Beach. Um, I've been looking at buying an investment properly, but twice I didn't win um, on an offer situation. I thought if I offer more with no conditions, they automatically have to take mine. Please explain this to me as I, they have picked other people. Um, thank you, Jackson, for asking. So they don't automatically just have to pick you. Let's just say for easy numbers sake, the house is listed for 500 and you um, say 525 and then it sells for 520 and you're like, 
what the heck, why did it, why did they not take mine? Like, don't they have to? So they don't have to, they can take whatever one they want. They could take 460 if they wanted to. Um, but usually a reason they might take a lower one is, let's just say maybe you had 2000 down and the other people had 200,000 down or 400,000 down. Or maybe you said you have to close December 17th because I'm only approved. Um, my mortgage is only locked in for this long. Um, and maybe they want an April closing. Um, or maybe you said vacant possession and they want the tenants to stay and they really like the tenants, they don't wanna kick them out. Um, or maybe you have a lot of extra clauses and you're like, I want a survey, I want this, I want that, I want a whatever. And the other person just basically had nothing and they're like, man, this one's cleaner and maybe you annoy them a bit. Um, so it could be for many reasons, but usually it has to do with the deposit amount and the um, closing date. So I would just suggest possibly doing an open closing date, which means putting a blank one and letting them pick whatever they want and putting the highest amount down you possibly can for the deposit um, because you can get that back if you backed out because of finance or inspection anyways. And if you didn't um, have finance or inspection as a condition, you were just buying it conditionless, you're gonna put it towards your down payment anyway. So it's not like it's really, you know, it's just going towards your down payment. So that's what I would do. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so uh, there was a lady, um, a single mom, and I don't even need to look at that. I know what it says. Um, a single mom of three, and basically she wanted to be a good example for her kids. Um, so she decided this year, this Christmas, that she's going to go into her local grocery store and she was going to say the next eight people that come through this till, I'm going to pay for their groceries. So that's what she did. So she made eight families and eight single people, whoever they were, their night uh, much better. So I thought that was super cute and a great example for her kids just to give back um, to others, whether they're less fortunate or not. She just wanted to show that it's nice to give and it's not always, you know, hoard, hoard. Um, and just to give back. Um, okay, the question Becky, uh, that Becky asked in Moonstone, um, I just read your book and it was uh, lent to me by my kid's daycare provider. I loved it, uh, congrats. Um, what my question is to you, um, if you could only do one thing in 2021, what would it be and why? Um, Becky, I know a lot of my friends would probably say travel, which I am not going to say that's not my answer. Um, my answer would just be to be like live a better version of myself. I know it sounds super tacky, um, but that can, you know, obviously um, be a whole bunch of things. So as long as I can be a better version of myself, then I consider that a win for 2021. Nobody likes to really go backwards in anything. Um, so you can't change the past. You can't live in the past. Um, you don't need to like fret over yesterday. So as long as each and every day you try and, you know, do your best and do your best for tomorrow, then that is what I would consider my one thing for 2021. Um, but thank you for asking. Hi, Dakota. Um, okay, so, oh yeah. I'm going to, before I tell you this story, I'm just going to remind people of the um, Christmas giveaway. So December 20th, we are knocking on people's doors and giving them Christmas dinners and presents. Um, so if you know of anybody that you would like to nominate for the free giveaway, uh, just send a video to info at cripshomes.com of who you would like to win and why, and we will n um, never disclose why we picked them or why you think they should win. Um, I had a fellow the other day and he was like bawling on his, um, on his, uh, nomination and he doesn't want anybody to see it. And you know, that's his uh, prerogative and stuff. So we're not going to show, like we won't show anything. Again, whether it's super tragic or super amazing why you love them, we're not going to show the personal information, okay? But we're going to go to people's doors on the 20th, which is a Sunday, and surprise them. Um, so some people think that like hardware stores or big box stores or whatever, they're like, I don't even know the proper word, but do you know what I mean? Like it, they don't care about the little people. Um, so there was a little boy, um, where was he from? Missouri. And he's four and he like loves the appliance section and all the gadgets and so forth and he is autistic and every time that he's about to have a meltdown or starts to have a meltdown his mom puts him in the car and drives him to Lowe's and um, I, be, I guess some of the associates started to recognize him and so forth and kind of started to talk to the mom and stuff and figured out okay when he has a meltdown they come here and so Lowe's head office got um, word of it and they got him like a little vest that said Lowe's with his name on it and they um, gave him a bunch of other swag um, but then they also put his picture on the wall and they said honorary associate uh, for the little four-year-old. So it was cute. Um, so I was like happy stuff. Um, what was my next question? Irina from Thornton. Um, I saw your giveaway the other day on Facebook. I was wondering how I nominate my nephew and what criteria does he need to have? 
Um, thank you, Irina. I know I just kind of said that, but it's because you didn't know when you asked me that during the week. Um, so yeah, he just has to live um, in Barrie, Simcoe County, Oro, Innisfil, Essa, Springwater, etc. He cannot live in North Bay or Kingston, um, and he has to be over the age of 18. That is the only criteria um, whatsoever. There needs to be no other criteria, okay? Um, that was actually um, the lady the other day, yesterday it was, and after, you know, we stopped taping and stuff, and she's like, sorry, and who are you? So there's no criteria. You don't have to know us whatsoever or who we are, um, the random people knocking at your door, um, but you can nominate whoever, and you can also nominate multiple people. Multiple people. Um, so you can nominate 30 families if you want. She, who won yesterday, had been nominated three times by her um, childhood friend. So feel free if you've nominated somebody before and you still think they're deserving, you want to nominate them again, maybe they'll win uh, this month. Um, hi, Chris. Hi, Melissa. Um, okay. Now, oh, that was Irina. Okay, so a new there was a new survey out. And basically it said um, 8 out of 10 um, people want to hear good news before 2021, which I don't blame them. And hopefully I gave you a lot of good news, cute things, cute stories today. Um, 7 out of 10 people said they're trying to do something positive every day. 43% of people say they try and make somebody smile. Um, each day, 34% say they try and make somebody laugh. Um, and then when people are down and out, what they said they could check off, like what they do when they're down and out. 46% um, say they all put on their for, uh, favorite movie. 43% will eat their favorite snack. I would probably be that person. 43% um, uh, will also go for a walk. 38% um, will snuggle a pet and 29% will call a friend. Um, a quarter of the uh, people say that since quarantine, they have taken up singing in the shower. 38% um, have donated to uh, charity and 28% have volunteered somewhere. 66% um, of people surveyed, which there was 20,000 uh, people surveyed, said that they find that their community is closer now since everything and they appreciate things more. And 78% um, said they realized how important it is to shop local. They always heard the saying before or what have you, but now they like really see shop local, which is awesome. 42% um, have increased the amount that they donate um, automatically. Maybe it comes out of their bank account or something every month. And 52% um, of people said they have a more positive outlook on life now than they did before um, COVID and are more appreciative. And 48% say they take care of their mental health more now than they used to before. Um, that is that. Again, the Christmas giveaway um, is very soon, not next weekend, the weekend after, December 20th. So please get your nominations in to info at cripshomes.com. Um, of who you would like to win and why. Again, it could be a single person, it could be a couple, it could be somebody with one kid or somebody with eight kids or whatever, it doesn't matter, um, as long as they live in Simcoe County. And we're super excited to give them Christmas dinner as well as gifts for their family. Hope everybody is amazing and have an awesome night.